All right, so in this following video, I'm going to talk about some things that I think are important in terms of playstyle for, for optimally playing Pudge in a game. However, I would like to note that I think that a lot of this is intuition. A lot of this stuff is stuff that you should practice and it should become automatic for you. And that's when this becomes very, very powerful, like a very, very powerful skill set is, is the faster you do this stuff, the more likely it is to succeed. So practice, 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 and you can be a, you know, a t total pudge god uh, using these tips. But this isn't the limitation. You know, there's a lot more that you can learn. But I think these are the most important ones. So uh, let's uh, let's get into it, guys. The most important thing is you, you need to understand that you're playing a very versatile hero when you're playing Pudge. You're a very utility heavy hero, but you can also do a lot of damage. So that opens a wide variety of things that you can do in terms of items. And what I would suggest is just try things. If you think something's good and, and it's not meta, I don't give a fuck. Try it. It's probably good on the hero. And speaking of, you know, like doing very not meta stuff. The way you farm on Pudge, it isn't really the way that a lot of mids would function in, in this meta. And I think it's just because Pudge is a hero that you want to be applying pressure. If you're not throwing hooks at people in lanes, if you're not running around going for kills, even if you're losing farm, you're still creating that effect of the fear that it puts on the enemy team. So you need to be running around, you need to be going for kills, which means that the farm isn't really going to come from jungling or from going for, for lane creeps. The farm's gonna come from killing people, so if you don't kill people, you're not gonna get farm. Which isn't that big of a deal because, as we said in one of the first videos, I'm sure in this one a dozen times, is that Pudge is an XP dependent hero, he's not a gold dependent hero, so you can still be very useful in terms of damage, in terms of utility, all this stuff, even if you don't have items. So it's no big deal, if the enemy team just isn't giving you kills, they're just not defending towers because they're so scared of you, that's fucking great, that's a great thing right there. You're gonna end the game, bottom two net worth, but your teammates are going to be, you know, top four net worth in, in the game because of that. So sometimes as a core Pudge, you will suffer because you won't get kills because they'll play scared. I think that's okay. Pudge doesn't really jungle because you get hit by the creeps, kind of hurts a lot. You kind of sell the stout shield really early in favor of these smaller items like a Hood of Defiance and four staffs and stuff like that, you know. But Pudge doesn't really hold stout shield for too long, so jungling is kind of hard. And then Rod also fucking hurts himself. So you're not just going to walk up and rot a camp because, you know, you kill one camp, you have to go back to the fountain. Like, that's not efficient jungling. You, you can't do that. You can't go in a game and do something that's so horribly inefficient and expect it to work just because it's, you know, pe people jungle for farm. So Pudge is more of like a lane farmer, but the only issue with farming a lane is that you're showing yourself. The enemy Luna sees that there's a Pudge mid farming the lane. What the fuck is she afraid of? The Pudge is mid. He's in vision. That's a Luna, right? Like, she's squishy, she's fast, but she's she's squishy, she has really no way to escape a Pudge, but she sees the mid farming lane creeps. She's not gonna play like a little bitch, she's gonna push the fucking lane with her aura. So, you need to create this effect that you're everywhere by being nowhere in vision. You really don't wanna farm lane creeps unless you have to, unless you really need farm. But you can't really jungle that much. So what do you do? You go for kills, do a lot of smoke rotations. You can jungle, but usually only when Dismember is up because you can dismember and that'll heal you through the rot damage. I wouldn't really suggest that sort of stuff unless you really, really need to get gold for an item. Let's say if you're like 600 gold away from 4 staff or something, you're just like, yo, team, like chill out for a second. I'm just going to farm. But keep in mind, you fucking dismember a creep. The enemy team here is like, oh, fresh mate. Good idea. Fresh mate. Right? They're like, okay, they're either doing Roche or he's jungling like a moron with this member. And that's fine. If you need gold, that's an absolutely perfectly fine thing to do. But just know that you're revealing that nobody in these lanes are in danger. So yeah, big important note here is that you can't really farm the lanes. You can't really farm the jungle because then they know where the fuck you are. You got to be off the map. You got to get kills if you want farm on Pudge. So that's why I would suggest if you're trying to play mid Pudge, you need to practice games where you're snowballing, where you're constantly running around. Never stop applying pressure. Be a motherfucker. You know what I mean? Go behind towers, stand in vision, be a fucker. Just never let up on the pressure because otherwise you're just going to fall behind. You have to apply the pressure or you're going to fall behind because you're not a shadow fiend. You don't go raise a few creep camps and all of a sudden you have 3,000 gold. But there's no way to do that. So either you need to apply pressure and push early or you need to fucking kill the shit out of people, which is obviously also applying pressure, so that's really important. Playstyle for mid-pudge. Uh, well, I kind of talked about it 
I think the playstyle for mid pudge is taking an early game advantage via doing nice rotations or possibly killing your lane, taking an advantage from early game kills and the fact that you have early levels, and applying that to getting kills while you're pushing towers. So you group up as five with your team, or you go for smoke rotations, and you go to kill people and take objectives. I, I seriously think drafting something like a drow, some lineup that's actually very capable of taking towers with a pudge is really strong, because then when you go for a smoke rotation to their jungle with your two supports, you kill somebody with your super high level pudge, there's no way they're defending a tower, because it's going to die so quickly, and if they want to stagger in while somebody's dead, well, you have a pudge, you can fucking hook them out, and you can destroy them, right? Like, nobody's going to defend that, so you can transition that into a very push-heavy lineup. Alternatively, it can be a kind of team fighting thing where they do fight you and then you just win because you have an overlevel pudge who's, you know, tanking everything and, and doing uh, doing damage and setting up nice initiations and stuff like that. There's a note here, if you do fall behind, you need to recognize, okay, how much farm does the enemy team have over me? Does my enemy Shadow Fiend have like two items, two big items, and I only have one? Then you need to kind of play more on the sidelines of fights and go for kills on supports as opposed to trying to initiate on like a you know bkb shadow fiend something like that you, you kind of want to realize when maybe your role is to be a support killer as opposed to a core killer i do think that's usually a lot more important to kill the cores but there are some times when you can hook say a shadow fiend and he just pops a bkb or you know he has a ton of hp because he's really farmed and his, his team just jumps in and helps him if you don't have enough farm to actually do the damage along with your team, or maybe they don't have enough farm because you had a poor mid lane, which resulted in uh, pressure being applied to their lanes, then there's a, a big issue hooking a hero who you guys just can't kill before the team fight starts. Because then all you're doing is you're using a hook and starting a team fight with a team that's more farm than you, right? So in these situations, you need to be like, okay, I don't have items, I haven't gotten very many kills, but I need to make something happen. So who do you hook? You hook the fucking Rubik, you hook the Disruptor. You do not hook the Tidehunter, you do not hook the Axe, you do not hook the Shadow Feed. You can if you're huge, and if you're doing well, if you're snowballing, but do not fucking hook those heroes. Do not expect to win a team fight just because you landed a fucking hook. I think that's a big misconception about Pudge, is, oh, I hooked somebody, I landed a hook, therefore we won the team fight. That's not how it works. Dota's a game of math. It's just fucking numbers, right? If they have more numbers than you have numbers, your numbers go below zero and you die. So you can't just be hooking a Tidehunter and then he ravages your team, or you can't hook a Shadow Fiend. He pops a, a BKB and just winds up Requiem and fucking kills you all. You hook the Rubik and then all of a sudden it's 4v5 and most mathematicians would say that 5 is actually indeed greater than 4. So you'll win that team fight for the most part. So that's one adjustment to a playstyle that you need to make depending on how the game is actually going. And uh, I guess one note about the push strat with Pudge is that if you gain an advantage in your lane and they're scared of you and they're playing like little bitches because you're off the map, and you group up and you push towers, what you can do is you can hide in fog and TP to a tower that they're trying to split push at, and then you can be there ready for when they go to push it, and they think they're fine because they see your whole team top except for you, so they're like, okay, Pudge is, you know, Pudge is waiting in the jungle. He's just gonna hook when somebody TPs in. Little they fucking know you're hiding in the trees waiting for them to split push. You hook their anti-mage or something like that, your team TPs in because you TP'd early in anticipation that they would be split pushing. That's one thing that you can do, is you abuse the fact that they're so scared to fight you, and you go hide in places and wait for them to split push, because that's all they can do, right? How the hell else can they respond to a five-man push with a tanky-ass pudge sitting in the trees? They do nothing but split push, but little do they know you're actually hiding in the fucking trees that they're split pushing at already. That's a very important thing. If you're showing outside of fog, you can't do that. You, ha you have to be in fog, or you can't do these sorts of plays. So I'm a bit of a fucking idiot, and I definitely forget things. The family has a history of Alzheimer's. So if you uh, find anything in your games of Pudge that you think are important uh, playstyle tips, please leave a comment below because there's definitely stuff that's left out. Like I said, it's, it's something that has to become natural for you, but these are the things that off the top of my head I can think. These are ways that I, in my games, really excel with this hero, is being very good at these things. So. Let me know how it goes in your games, uh, let me know if it improves your MMR, and if there's anything that I forgot. So, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next adventure. Try me.